This is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday vaping news, science, and advocacy report for the 6th of November, 2020. On the news today, Vaporesso becomes one of the first child resistant certified vaping brands in Canada. Thailand's Prime Minister plans to keep ban on vaping in e cigarettes. Independent European Vape Alliance survey finds 80% of vapors stop smoking completely by picking up a flavorful vape. Oregon Measure 108 passed and now imposes a $2 per pack tax on cigarettes, 65% higher taxes on vape products, and doubles the taxes on cigars. This week we also have a research and commentary article. Baltimore's proposed e-cigarette tax is a defective way to cure budget shortfalls. In our science segment, literature review of 50 studies has documented vaping is more effective for smoking cessation than nicotine patches and gum. And this week we have two highlighted advocacy groups, American Vaping Association and the Independent European Vape Alliance. Stick around, more details coming up right after this. All right, our first article is actually a press release. Vaporesso becomes one of the first CRC compliant vaping brands in Canada. For those of us not living in Canada, might not be uh, familiar with what their requirements are going to be, and that's what the CRC regulation article is all about. Let you know that uh, Canada does have re regulations regarding vaping products too. They are not completely immune to the ridiculous laws that are imposed. However, this one sounds a little measured and reasonable. Child Resistance Certification. It's imposed by the Canadian Consumer Product Safety Act. And Vaporesso has become one of the first CRC compliant vaping brands in Canada. They uh, selected a couple of their products and modified them as needed to meet the Child Resistance Certification. That includes the Zero and the X-Cross CRC version with the PTF filling system. It also includes the GTX Tank 22 in our CRC version, and that's compatible with the Gen S, the Gen Nano, the Lux 2, and the Swag 2 mods. For those of us in the United States, this sounds awfully familiar. That's because it's just like the pre-market product application. Pre-market tobacco product application, the PMTAs. CRC compliance is a federal requirement for all vaping manufacturers who want to continue advertising and selling their vaping products in Canada just like the PMTA is a requirement for those selling vaping products in the United States. The regulations aimed at preventing children and teenagers from using vaping products. If you've had any experience with child-resistant packaging, you know sometimes they open it a hell of a lot easier than we can. Well, Vaporesso's products have been redesigned so that once you refill the pod, it is not possible for that fluid to come out of that pod without actually being utilized in its device. They use an innovative patented, as they called it, press to fill structure on its Zero and X-Cross CRC version products. They made this change in less than a year to meet regulatory requirements. The GTX Tank 22's e-juice filling and coil replacement mechanism work in tandem to bring a safer and more reliable vaping experience. Users have to press the cap to unscrew it and refill the e-juice or to change the coil. And they say it's difficult for children to perform this to get access to the e-liquid in the vape. All right, jumping over to Thailand. Thailand's Prime Minister plans to keep the ban on vaping and e-cigarettes. Philip Morris International is actively lobbying the Thai government to reverse the ban on smoking alternatives like e-cigarettes and vaping products. However, the Prime Minister has vowed to retain Thailand's ban on e-cigarettes, insisting the new government will not yield to lobbying from interest groups. Why is this uh, even being brought up? because uh, most of my viewers aren't going to be going to Thailand. Well, this article was selected for the purposes of letting you guys be reminded of the fact that you need to be aware of the laws and regulations in the areas that you're going. So if you're going from point A to point B with the holidays coming up, you need to be aware of what the laws are in between point A and point B. 
you need to know because there are draconian laws impacted and imparted on residents and travelers and visitors to areas. And you may be subject to fines and regulations that you did not even know existed or could even fathom that somebody would pass a law or regulations like that. It's not limited to countries. There are cities and states in this country, in the United States, that have draconian laws implemented banning electronic nicotine delivery systems. And it is a cartoon I've seen posted on social media in multiple places where you have a police officer that pulls somebody over and goes, I hope that's weed in your electronic vaping product because if it's nicotine, you're going to jail. Sounds ridiculous, but there are states and there are cities in this country that that can happen. Anyway, the article specifically states that travelers coming to Thailand should be aware that electronic cigarettes are illegal and that if you are found with them or you are caught using them, you will be arrested and face jail time or you could be fined several times the value of the illegal items. So if you're traveling from China to Australia on a business trip and you end up having to have a layover in uh, Thailand, well, the couple bottles of juice you have in your carry-on bag is considered a prohibited black market item. And if you're caught with them, they'll not only confiscate that, they'll throw you in jail and fine you. And that's it. There's no way of getting out of a situation like that. So be aware of the laws that are in place when you're traveling. Next article, jumping over to Planet of the Vapes. Independent European Vape Alliance has conducted a European survey and found that 80% of vapors stopped smoking completely after picking up a vape. They did some more research to look into the effects of flavors on consumer choice, and it's no surprise to find out that flavors matter. But before we get to that, let me cover the fact that 81% of vapors were able to completely stop using tobacco after picking up a vape. An additional 12% reduced smoking once they found vaping technologies, once they found a flavorful vape. That means 95% of the people that use vaping products or try vaping products reduce their deadly combustible cigarette usage simply because of an electronic cigarette. 86% of the participants assume that e-cigarettes are less harmful for them than tobacco cigarettes. Only 2% think that e-cigarettes are equal or more harmful compared to combustible cigarettes. The British government agency Public Health England estimates that e-cigarettes are 95% less harmful than tobacco cigarettes. Well, actually the latest research study bumps that up a couple notches, but until it's published, 95% is still a hell of a lot better than being the same or worse, like a lot of the news media have portrayed vaping and electronic cigarettes. However, this study also took a look at the importance of flavors. The survey found that the variety of flavors appeared to be one of the most important reasons for vapors to use, successfully use, electronic cigarettes. 40% of vapors use fruit flavored liquids in Europe. 25% prefer other sweet flavors, and 35% of them selected tobacco as their flavor. They also asked the participants how they would react if all flavors except tobacco were banned. The responses given demonstrated the problems the European Union faces should it press ahead with prohibitionist agendas. 20% of vapors said that they would switch to just the tobacco flavors. 33% of respondents stated that they would source their pre-made juices on the black market. And 10% came right out and says they would simply bin the electronic cigarettes and go back to smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. Prohibitionist agendas do not work. All they do is create a thriving black market and accomplish nothing of what the original authors of these regulations intended on having happen. 
Next article. Up in smoke. Cigarette vaping taxes are increasing. Measure 108 in Oregon was voted on this week, and we may not know who the president is, but we do know that in Oregon, anybody that uses cigarettes or electronic cigarettes or vaping products or cigars, any tobacco product, is going to now face higher taxes. Effective January 1st, cigarette taxes will increase by $2 per pack for a pack of 20 and $2.50 for a pack of 25. Little cigars, their taxes are going up too. And they may not seem like a lot, but it's going from 50 cents a cigar to a dollar a cigar. And vaping products are now going to be taxed 65% of their wholesale value in Oregon. When are they going to learn? When are they going to learn? All right, next article. This is a research and commentary article published by the Heartland Institute. Baltimore's proposed e-cigarette tax is a defective way to cure budget shortfalls. I love it when you have people that make commentaries or editorials and fill the article and editorial with researched data to justify their point of view. And this is an article that is definitely worth reading. I'm not going to run you through the whole thing, but it boils down to the fact that these draconian measures that people are enacting and these ridiculous tax rates that are being imposed on these products are not good. I don't understand how any of these people can come up with these ideas and think that that's going to be a great idea. First off, tobacco tax increases often result in long-term revenue shortfalls because just like the um, lovely taxes that they thought they were going to collect on cigarettes and the cigarette usage continued to decline, and then they went and spent all that money that they were supposed to get, now they have revenue shortfalls that are causing them to panic and enact more laws. At some point, the taxation process becomes the opposite effect of what these legislatures try to do. Secondly, these taxes are regressive. Lower income Americans are spending a larger share of their disposable income on cigarettes, vaping, and tobacco products, which means that the tax hikes in this bill are going to disproportionately impact the impoverished and the working class residents of Baltimore. This is all done by the newly elected mayor, Brandon Scott. We talked about this before. Well, take a look at the article yourself. This is a list of all the research that is included as justification for the things that are stated in this article. Definitely a worthy read. Next up, this is our science bit for today. Vaping is more effective for smoking cessation than nicotine patches or gums. The whole point of peer-reviewed studies is that once the studies are published out there, there are other organizations that take and gather up all these studies to put the data together. And this one is a new literature review conducted by the Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group in the United Kingdom. And it found that electronic cigarettes are a more effective tool for smoking cessation than nicotine gum and nicotine patches, otherwise known as nicotine replacement therapies. In this literature review, they looked at 50 different studies involving over 12,000 participants. 26 of the 50 studies were randomized control tests. And they concluded with moderate certainty evidence, limited by imprecision, meaning the studies had different ways of asking questions and the questions could lead you to, you know, teeter this way or teeter that way. However, with 95% confidence interval, they determined that in absolute terms, it would translate to an additional four successful quitters per 100. 
Yeah, vaping will guarantee you a more successful quit attempt than using traditional nicotine replacement therapies. There is now evidence that electronic cigarettes with nicotine are likely to increase the chances of quitting successfully compared to nicotine gums and patches. This is an expert from the Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group who co-led the review. One reason that they may be more effective than gum and patch at quitting is that users are able to continue the behaviors of smoking while managing their nicotine addiction. For me, it was candy cane flavored e-liquid. Started off at six milligrams. Then I switched to three milligrams. And then I combined zero milligram and three milligram to go to one and a half milligram. And then I just quit putting nicotine in it all together and just started using zero milligram. Once you eliminate the other thousands of chemicals that are in cigarettes, it's easy to give up nicotine because nicotine by itself is no more addictive than your cup of coffee. All right. Next, we're going to jump over to and take a look at The fact that I lost the lights. I cannot win. I just simply cannot win today. All right. Our first uh, advocacy group that we're going to take a look at today is the American Vaping Association. The American Vaping Association is a nonprofit advocacy group that champions the use, champions the use of vapor products and electronic cigarettes to help smokers quit their deadly addictive habit of smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. Take a look at the um, organization here. If United States, this is something that you should be interested in because they are fighting for your rights to keep vaping, to ke keep having vaping available to anybody that wants to quit smoking. And let's take a look at a testimonial from somebody who used vaping to quit smoking. This is Anthony Mitchell from California. And let's take a look at Anthony's testimonial. Smoked since 14, quit at 22. I'd been smoking since the age of 14. Yeah, because laws don't matter to teenagers. They're going to endeavor to take risky behaviors if they are that kind of person. Simply having a law that makes it illegal is not going to stop these kids from doing this. So anyway, getting back to his story. He'd been smoking since the age of 14. He'd gotten up to two packs a day at the age of 14 and decided to stop at a local vape shop in Colorado, Vapor Source, and he picked up a vape. And he started at 12 milligrams nicotine. Before he knew it, he stepped down to six, and then to three, and then to one and a half, and now he's using zero milligram nicotine. I doubt I will continue to vape now since I'm not really getting anything but the flavor from it anymore. But I'm 24 now, and I haven't had a tobacco since 22. For two years, he's been successfully vaping to quit smoking. Vaping really can help people quit. And it took me two years of waning myself off nicotine and my vape to totally get off nicotine. If you're looking to quit tobacco but don't want to do a cold turkey, I highly recommend vaping. Just have the diligence to step down your nick levels when you get used to your nick level. That's exactly what I did. When I found myself using the product less and less, I cut back the nicotine. And yes, naturally, when you cut back from six milligram to three milligram, you're going to want to vape more because your body is going to crave the nicotine. However, it doesn't take very long for you to get used to the new nicotine levels. And if you choose to continue to use nicotine that, as an adult, you can continue to do that. However, if you choose to give up the nicotine, it's easy to step down when you're vaping. 
Let's continue looking at his story here, okay? Vaping really can help people quit, and it took him two years to wane himself off of nicotine using his vape. If you're looking to quit tobacco and don't want to do a cold turkey, I highly recommend vaping. Just have the diligence to step down your nick levels when you get used to your new nick level. I noticed that when I would vape nicotine, I would get used to that level, and I would vape less at that level, take less hits of it throughout the course of the day. That's when I noticed I should step down my nick level again. The last one was the most difficult one to stop, as it is still cold turkey to go from one and a half milligrams to zero. But after three days, the cravings are gone. And he highly recommends going with Flavor Monster if you're wanting to buy one and a half milligram levels. Or you could do like other people have done, like I did for a while. You buy three milligrams, you buy zero milligrams, you take the two of them, put them in a bigger bottle, and now you have one and a half milligrams. It's that simple to decrease your nicotine usage. And it's that easy to quit smoking just by picking up one flavorful vape. All right, this week we have another advocacy group. Came across this one because of the article that we read earlier. So let's take a look at the Independent European Vape Alliance. The Independent European Vape Alliance is the only pan-European association aimed at uniting national associations, companies, manufacturers, and wholesalers in the vaping industry and providing them with responsible representation at the European level. They strive to make a difference and have positioned themselves as a credible voice uniting associations and key industry players in their goal to achieve differentiated legislation for the vape industry. Now, I know that there's not an independent organization fighting for indiv individual vapors rights, however, these organizations are fighting for your rights because there are crazy politicians out there who have their own agendas and it has nothing to do with whether or not vaping is safe. It has nothing to do whether or not kids are using these products. It has simply to do with the fact that they have an idea of what they want to accomplish and they're using this as an escape goat. So this motivated me to find a sponsor for today's episode. So. Let's take a look at the message from our sponsor today. Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes, but so what? But so what? Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes, but so what? Everybody knows Joe Friday. My daughters tell me that nobody knows him and nobody knows what I'm talking about, but that's okay. Because what he would say is just the facts, ma'am, just the facts, ma'am, very droll, dry, because people want to give their editorial comments. Well, I think this, I think this. No, no, no. Let's just start with the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. That's what we do. Joe Friday. Get to know him. You're pretty high and far out, aren't you? What kind of kick are you on, sir?
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the sponsor of this episode today. Like I am of every single episode here. Nobody's paying me to say this. I don't use nicotine in my products anymore. But I want to make sure that anybody that wants to quit smoking can easily quit smoking by picking up one flavorful vape. That's all it takes. One flavorful vape. So that's it for today's news, science, and advocacy. And my message to you is keep on vaping.